What's up, everybody? It's your favorite show, favorite show, Get a Bucket. I'm your host, Trey. I'm your host, Craig. My God, you did it. We ain't even, I ain't tell him to do nothing. I told him to move that damn UNC. Pella, give me that. Give me that. No. Get it. Give it here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let it go. Let it go. He not let, you're fired. That's crazy. That's, That's, That's trash. I, don't even, I, I never liked you. I never liked you. It re I really didn't. I'm going to just say it right off junk. Everybody else good, though? Everybody else good, though? <laughs> Man, it's good. Well, as y'all can see, we got our guys on the screen again. We got Nick. What's going on, y'all? And Sir Talks A Lot. Devin, how you doing, baby? Everything good with you? Everything good? Oh, he's hurt. He's hurt. That's cool. I'm going to let him. I'm going to let him uh, get, get his payback when we talk about our teams a little bit later. Uh, but, you know, I had to start off show a little energetic, a little strong, you know what I'm saying? Maybe a little a little slanderous, but it's to make the, it's to make the show a little, a little more entertaining along the way. So, fellas, uh, did y'all have anything y'all want to say before we start shopping? <laughs> sip, sip Stella. Sip Stella. Okay, cool. We're going to wait. Got you. You got anything you want to say before we Let's just get into it, man. I'm excited what we're talking about today. That's a bet. That's a bet. All right. Well, look, let's go ahead and get on into it, shall we? All right, ladies and gentlemen, listen, we started out the, the episode strong, right? So I think we got to continue with quarter one. We got here college teams. I know this is get a bucket, but we're going to talk about a little football, right? Y'all see the pillows. Minus one. Um, so I'm a USC fan. I'm going to just say that off the break, right? We already stated he's a Miami Hurricane fan. I don't know if y'all can see it or not. This brother is clearly an LSU fan, right? And go Tigers. Yeah, I mean, you will be picking one. I mean, it's not the baseball episode, not Negro League specifically, but okay, shout out to the Negro League. Shout so out. clearly he don't have a squad. So he'll be the unbiased party. Um, Devin, we'll start with you since you're the guest. Uh, you got anything you want to say about your LSU Tigers, which by the way, they do play my USC Trojans week one, which I already expect us to lose. That's right. I ate miles myself. What's good, bro? Well, you already took the words out of my mouth. Uh, I expect my team to win. You expect your team to lose. We'll see what happens come Sunday. I think we'll, we'll both be watching that game really close to see how it um, all goes out because I think both of our teams are very similar and we both have quarterbacks that are in their first year taking over a program two high-profile co head coaches offensively who are also, like, both also fixing their defenses. So it's really, really intriguing. We've got similarities on both sides of the ball from a team standpoint. Outside of defense, because I know that's our glaring issue, right, what would you say is USC's biggest woe? If you look at um, just, I'll say from an offensive standpoint, with Lincoln Riley in the past, the thing that USC has going for him is that in his history, they've been historically known for putting up on average 40 points a game. But if you look at the games where they usually have trouble, it's when they don't have a good rushing um, team. So if LSU can stop the run, mm -hmm. they'll get to have some fun. But – is LSU going to stop the run? Cause... I believe they will. Okay, now do you say that just because it's USC and you don't really respect us, or you think y'all defense is that elite? I think the defense is that elite because I, cause Blake Baker is back as a defensive coordinator. I remember how he fixed Missouri's defense to be like top 30 out of like 130 in the in the college football this past year. Okay. And he used to be on LSU's defensive staff from the year before when Brian, before Brian Kelly got there. Yeah. And we got Corey Raymond back, who's the godfather of DBU. So I know that that secondary is going to be ready. And we got Perky. Perky's now repping number seven. So you already know he that dog. They're going to have him running all over the place. So y'all got an elite defense. I guess y'all ain't got a suspect offense. No, because that offensive line's still the same. Okay, so we might be able to talk about y'all in, 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 in the playoffs a little bit later on. Chris. No, for real, can I get the pillow, though? Like, can we get rid of that? No? All right, screw it. Um, 
Miami, Miami. Uh, are y'all really? Are y'all really much to talk about? Notice I ain't talk about my boys like that. I'm sorry. I'm just a realist. Um, is there much really talk about your boys? Absolutely. Um, this, if people say that we are one of the picks to win the ACC this year, the what? ACC. The AC, that's cute, I guess. I mean, that's cute. That's cute. That's cute. That's cute. Y'all gotta play against. What? Uh, you get so aggressive, guys. Oh, yeah. Why? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's halftime. Y'all gotta play against them on Saturday, on Sunday. So, well, is that. We've already established that. So, I already said I'm gonna lose. So, your point really don't you matter. Ain't no, you ain't gonna have no faith. Wow. Well, I mean, he already texted me saying he's he's already starting zero and two this weekend. So, yeah, well, I had no faith, but no, I'm, anyway. I'm a realist. I, just like how this brother, I looked at him and he started laughing after you said that your team is is is, is legit. Like it's one of the favorites uh, as uh, as uh, of, of the ACC. How about contenders? Let's talk there. Like, can y'all get to the playoffs and make some noise? Playoffs, playoffs, maybe. Playoffs, maybe. So y'all maybe can get to the playoffs. It only just depends on how we play at tomorrow. Uh, well, in Gainesville. That's so your first. So you mean you mean week one? Yes, week one. All right. So if y'all win week one, then you think y'all will be able to have some fun come at the end of the season? I, I, I pointed at you, so don't act like I'm stealing your shit. Absolutely. Week one is literally going to tell us how our season is is going to be. It's either that we're going to have a good season or or we want to have a, a mid-season. Okay. All right, so if y'all win week one, y'all have some fun, but if you if you lose, then y'all some poo. <laughs> we ain't poo. Poo is one. We ain't poo. I mean, you trying to... All right, that's cool. We trying to... Long story. Uh, that's about here. I mean, it, it, like I said... We ain't win. I, okay, not no, okay let's ask this. Let's ask this. Do we need to talk about Miami fellas at all? I have a question about Miami, actually. It's like, 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 legitimately. Forget the playoffs. Is Miami a legit contender to get to the ACC championship? Well, he just said, yeah, and I'm not going to have that. I said, honestly, that, hold on. You just, you, you, yeah, you, just, you, you just said that. Let, let, let's ask the only person who don't okay. have a team. Answer the question. Okay, so you from an outward yeah. perspective, um, I believe that the ACC is going to be in a real revamp in terms of development. Uh, yes. I think given the new slate of teams now in the ACC and given the standard of the season going forward, Miami's kind of just going to fall in this middle point, right? The culture they've developed over the years has been rough, tumble, you know, exactly. hood dudes from yeah. Miami Dade, you know what I'm saying, coming into the, t- the school and taking over. Now, Cam Ward doesn't play football like that, right? He was playing in the Pac-12. He's got to get used to the ACC standard of defense, Uh which is typically a more structured, more rigid defense. Can he attack a secondary that's more trained in press than, let's say, a Pac-12 system where you have a lot of off-ball defenders who aren't necessarily, who are willing to give him those 10, 15, 20-yard throws? Probably not, right? He's going to have some more struggle. What's his connection like with Xavier Restrepo? Right, mm-hmm. all those things have to go into account because, really, guys, college football is one of those things that you can't predict unless you know for a fact that you have returning starters. And Miami's a team; it's not returning as many starters as a lot of teams out there. So, long I don't story. Know how you were gonna see? Long story short, yeah, yeah, but it sound like he's not really. I'm not really with here with saying that it's gonna be a, an ACC championship because you still gotta pass Clemson. And a Clemson team that is half is still a little more than a Miami team. I'm okay, sorry. but still, okay. But they're a little shaky. But, yeah, yeah. exactly, shaky enough. Did we just see what a mid, a mid Georgia Tech did, team did to a top 10 rank at Florida State team this uh, last weekend? I mean, come on now. Like, Do you did, expect that to go on continuously, though? Do you expect Florida State to... Struggle, quote unquote. Struggle, I said struggle, struggle in big games, yes, but but struggle against like teams that you should be ten to fifteen point favorites. No. Well, I'm, I'm, if, I, <laughs> if I'm that well, Sweeney, I'm over there like, see, I told y'all, I told you. Look, look at DJ. I told you. Why do you think we got rid of him? 
I I I think it's kind of tough for me to put my eggs in in, in into Miami's basket right now because the one time where y'all were kind of entertaining, you dropped the ball. So I can't really I can't really have much faith in y'all personally. So I mean I'm sorry. I, I tried. I got. I really was. I was trying to be with you too, man. Like I, they, I, I looked around. I tried. I, I, I didn't. It didn't feel like it was. But I'm, I'm glad you have faith. You're a little more ignorantly optimistic than I am, and then yeah, that means you might be a bigger fan of, uh, of your team than I am of mine. I also just think too. I'm a realist again, and I've seen us mess up at the beginning, just to continue to mess up or have a strong finishing. And I'm like, so what happens if we just play? All right, whatever, bro. So, but ladies and gentlemen, um, as y'all can see, we, 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 we did talk a little bit about our teams. I would love to say we had a little bit more to talk about, but again, my Trojans, I don't think we're going to do that well. Here's what I'm saying about USC. I can throw you a bone here because I think historically Lincoln Riley has not done a good job of setting up a defense. Right, you just he's not a defensive coach. So, if your defense can pull together or surmise any sort of semblance of structure and, and and consistency, your offense has always been something that's you know relatively explosive in Lincoln in Lincoln Riley's career. That's fair. That's fair. But like, I I yeah. feel like we got Mike D'Antoni and, uh, and we've seen how Mike D'Antoni did in basketball. Close. It's just too bad to say horseshoes. But I will add to this real quick, though, to add to his point, and I'll give you some credit. Lincoln Riley, the guy that he hired to be his D.C., is one of the only D.C.s that has been able to actually stop his air raid offense. Mm. I forget the guy's name, but I think they limited them rushing-wise to only three yards in one game at whatever game that they played against you. So, and then he hired that guy. So that might be something that works in your favor to help your defense. I appreciate that. The words of, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Why like, you I, just I, be so bad to go down <laughs> on yourself? A little rough. <laughs> or I'm just trying to get good karma and not and not have no negative juju. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to say like like what like what my boys do. I'm not saying we're gonna win the championship at all. I'm not. I'm not because that's that that you jinx it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't. But, you don't have Steve Sarkeesian no more. We're not gonna talk about that. We don't. We don't have to. But ladies and gentlemen, um, what we're gonna do is take a quick little hiatus. Pay some bills. Come right back. Talk some more sports, possibly football. So, hope y'all enjoy it, and uh, we'll be we'll be right back. Air talk. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Listen, for starters, shout out DT, right? Y'all, y'all beat the jersey. Um, merging, merging of different conferences in college football, right? So, uh, speaking of DT, because again, y'all peep the 12. The Pac-12, yeah, they ain't really got too many teams. I'm sorry, it's looking a little, it's looking a little rough over there, fellas. Um, how are y'all feeling about the merging of conferences as 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 a whole, is this gonna change the football season pretty soon? Like, if so, how 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 is that? I saw you shake your head a little bit. Devin, we'll start with you then. Plain and simple, what's gonna eventually happen is there's not gonna be any conference. It's just gonna be playing college football. Like, okay. you're just gonna have a bunch of teams from different areas, and everybody's just gonna be playing each other. I think that's where we're gonna in the not too distant future we're gonna eventually see because now you already have. You know, in my opinion, you got teams going to conferences now that honestly, in my opinion, shouldn't even be in those conferences. Like me personally, 
I think I don't think USC has any re- reason to be in the Big Ten. I don't think like Colorado has any reason to be in the Big Twelve. I feel like that's a jab. Yeah, dude. I'm just being re- I'm just being honest. Like I don't think Oklahoma has any reason to be in the SEC. Why can't USC be though in the it, it like there though? Like, 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 like I'll say it like, but like we got the cachet, but like we got the history. Um, like I, I just look at it like this. I think it would have been better if like if certain teams are going to go into a conference. I think certain other teams should have gotten out. Like I'll be like for one example, Vanderbilt. Honestly, they've always been the underdog of the SEC. They can get out and go to a different conference and maybe do a little bit better. And you could bring some of I think the reason why like A and M. It made sense to put AM into the SEC because they at least shown that they were like they were in Texas as well. Texas is big on football. Like they have comp- they have competitors that can actually make it at the SEC level. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma doesn't have the same caliber of a team, in my opinion, like Texas AM would to be able to compete in the SEC. But because of the name, do you think they can start recruiting pe- or, um, different players, better players, and now they can bolster up their program? I remember hearing like our alma mater, George Mason. We left. A, or, a, or CAA, I mean, oh my God. And we went elsewhere, A10. And the competition was a little bit stiffer, but we also helped out, that helped out with the recruiting. So, I mean, can the same thing happen as well? Because I think that's what a lot of teams are ultimately banking on. It could, but you also have to factor in the fact that NIL is now a huge factor when it comes to recruiting. I don't uh-huh. think it doesn't necessarily matter necessarily where you're based out of because, like, you got you got guys who are like from like Georgia and Texas or Alabama, whatever, and they're going out to like Oregon. When we know damn well they should be playing in the SEC, but because Oregon has people like Phil Knight contributing millions and millions of dollars in the NIL, they're choosing that over the places that'll actually develop them. Okay. So you gotta be able to like Sometimes you got to be able to factor that in when it comes to like who's building top tier programs as well. Okay, I'm not I'm about to say I'm hearing a lot of unknowns over here. So when we, if we get rid of the conferences, right? Mm-hmm. Do you ultimately think that's going to be a good thing for football? Like, I think in general, like we have to understand that as much money as this, you know, everything's a business, mm-hmm. and as much money as NCAA, the football makes the NCAA. Um, we have to take into account that these are people who are trying to get degrees too. You know, their kids, they have school, taking them across the country for a football game. It messes with their entire week. You know what I mean? I mean it I, does, I but like I do football. know, I do know some athletes can rearrange their schedule, can get tests taken at a different time, different day. You know, like I understand that they get special at the same privileges. time. You get special privileges. What happens when you stop playing football? Do you get special privileges still? Well, no, but at learning how to manage your time, yeah, correctly and assessingly mm-hmm. is an important life skill. And it's something where, like, you're going to be a cog in a machine at some point. So, can Even we, if you don't want to be, you will be. Can we say, That's though, we start. Can we say though they are learning to manage their time? Because in reality, they're on the clock when that NIL deal. So you get to go and, and get paid fair. here. Yeah. You don't have to worry about school in reality unless you're getting your master's degree. But that might be on the back burner, too, because they're getting this bread right now. Like, that, that could be their priority. So... I, no, I, I just think it's not going to do well for the, a lot of these kids. I do hear that too. Because while, while, it, while it affects, while it's going to help, you know, the top ten percent of athletes that get a, a good amount of nil money, yeah, you know, have those opportunities. What about the other ninety that aren't? You know, and that athletes? goes back to my point. The other issue that I have with the nil is two things. One, I feel like it hurts players' development, mm-hmm. and two, it I think it causes. It, it makes it more difficult to manage a roster because a lot of these kids think that because they were a five-star recruit coming out and it's like, oh, I'm backing up this person. I didn't get a lot of playing time. Like, I need more money going into my next year. I'm like, but you're not even starting. Like, why Like, would I pay you or give you a bigger NIL deal when the NIL is in place off of name, image, and likeness? If your name ain't really out there that much, why do you think you deserve more money when you haven't even played it now. And I think that's where there needs to be a little bit more regulation, like, as far as, like, how everything is structured. Well, all these kids are following the example of, like, Travis Hunter, right, and the way that he finessed the NIL system in in, in kind of its inception Um, and view themselves as kind of that same caliber of athlete. But there's only one athlete in NCAA history since the 60s who's successfully played both sides of the football multiple times. So... 
Yeah. What are the odds you're going to be that guy, kids? I'm sorry. But also, he's in a good situation because who's his coach? Yeah. Deion Sanders. Mm-hmm. That's exactly. true, too. The last athlete. Could we say he would be doing the same thing if he was at a different university? Probably not. Probably not. You no, know, they would make him specialize in corner for sure. Exactly. And well, he's not going about, he's like about right. and what you said about uh, in Colorado. This is their second time around in the Big 12. Mm-hmm. So this time, like. That was their first year in the Big 12. No, 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 no. This is second term. Of coming back into the Big Twelve. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because at first, like, they dealt with like the power running game and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Now, they ain't a brand new Big Twelve where like you can like throw the ball at down the field. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah so, so how how would a how would the shifting of conferences focus and like or impact a team like Colorado? You get you got prime time, mm-hmm. right? Like, how would that negatively impact them? For example. Um, I want to say impact, impact, uh, a negative activity, but would it be a, a lot more eyes on them this year like it was last year? Absolutely, yes. Because even though, like, it's... I feel like it, eyes on them regardless. No, 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 no. We're talk- I think what we're talking about is expectations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, do they have, like, expectations to, don't like... They, don't they? They, they don't, yeah, y- y- y'all saying they their expectations wouldn't be as high? I think what the I'm expectations saying is, are pretty much the same as they were last year. Yeah, yeah. But it's at a higher level. Now. I think when we say yeah. expectations, it's like, think of it this way, right? It's like, um, say, for example, you're a team that we're talking about you, but it's like, it's your first time in. We're giving you a little bit of grace here and there. Like, you look at how they were last year. Like, they started off kind of shaky or whatever. They were so undefeated and whatnot. And... We gave them the we gave them the excuse. It was like they got all the skill players. They just don't have a they don't have strength in the trenches on the offensive line and the defensive line. They were both both of those areas were like bottom feeders ranking wise in the entire college football league. They had the off season to try to improve those things, mm-hmm. but then now it's like okay, we just saw you play an FCS team, not even an FBS team, an FCS team in North Dakota State a couple of days ago, and you still Could struggled. Not- in the trenches, offensive line wise, defensive line wise, there were a couple of missed tackles, but we're not going to count that much. It's the fact that there was no real pass rush, and there was no really strong emphasis on the offensive line, which is literally the two it's things that Dion said that they were going to fix the entire off season. It's true. It's so like yeah. every issue they had was not addressed. Okay, so if we're getting rid of the conferences, then it doesn't sound like it's going to benefit Colorado at all because they still have issues that they need to address, preferably in the trenches. Is that fair to say? But to be fair, it's I, also basically well, I, I, one game that we've seen. I mean, I mean, I mean still, I think the – like, 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 like the point is the, the conference – I ain't trying to talk about specifically. I was just using them as an example. Mm-hmm. If, if we're removing the conferences, is that going to help or hurt them? And it sounded like it ain't going to do but so much either way. He Not said there won't no negative vibes. I didn't hear a positive vibe for them. I think the reality is, whether there's conferences or not, if you're that team, you're that team regardless. And I just think, in Colorado's standpoint, from what I saw, I'm missing that it factor from them. I'm missing the the need. Because what is Dion's mantra? He's like, I don't have captains. I got leaders and I got dogs. I don't see the dog aspect. I don't see as much leadership going on as I would like to see. Okay. All right. Well, like, 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 you know, say what you mean, mean what you say. You know, if you're, if that's how you want to lead your program, I got to see that. But I don't, I don't feel that energy. I don't feel like, like, like Coach K used to say, the three E's, energy, emotion, enthusiasm amongst my leaders and my dogs. I don't feel that from that team. I don't see it. Okay. All right. Well, Fellas, I hate to do it to y'all like this. Y'all heard the buzzer, though. But, Dion, we might have to talk about you, champ, because I ain't going to hold. That quarter was supposed to be specifically about the format of playoffs, of season, how it impacts and stuff. I use y'all as an example. They kind of got a little focused on you. My bad. I, we love you, I, 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 you I, see, It didn't look, sound like We should have loved you. But, but what we're going to do is take a quick hiatus, come back, 
and we might we might talk about y'all a little bit. So um, we talk about y'all, but we also talked about you a good bit too. So maybe we got to talk about some other team staff. Now that I think about it, let's figure it out. And we'll come right back. All right, after a moment from our sponsors. Hooping is an activity that can be enjoyed by all. It's a team game about getting and stopping buckets. Everyone's always rushing to the goal. Well, make sure to rush and watch Team Gold Rush, one of the best teams in the Special Olympics of Virginia. Team Gold Rush even has former NBA All-Star participants on the team. Clearly, they've struck gold. Ready to suit up and practice? I know, I know. We talking about practice. Not a game, not a game. We talking about practice. Practice still makes perfect. So when the opponent starts hitting their shots, Team Gold Rush can bounce back due to their training. Remember, offense sells tickets and defense wins championships. Watch us get a bucket and rush for the gold. We aim to be that gold standard. So want a team where you can win and have fun? Team Gold Rush is your number one. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Listen, college football. Unfortunately, I ain't the biggest fan of it. You know what I'm saying? My team, I don't want to talk about it. But the season focus, though, there's a couple of teams that we can focus on. I'm going to just get right down to it, fellas. We're going to go around the room. Georgia, are they a clear-cut favorite to win it all? Yes. Okay, so yes, you say? No. No, and you say? Yes. Yes. Okay, we got two yeses and no. Georgia, they love you. Um... Alabama without saving, can they get to the playoffs? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> he not y'all. Yeah, he he not. He, well, y'all see the jersey. All right. Um, Texas, is this a resurgent year? Can they make some noise and get to the playoffs again? Get to that. I that think they'll have the same level of success they had this past year. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Yes. That's a yet. Yeah. All right, you kind of generous with these yeses. All right, that's a bet. I appreciate it. Right. Every question has been pretty straightforward. That's a bet. That's a bet. Um, so then this one might get a little tricky. Do you have a non-power five team that can make the playoffs, make a little noise, make some shake? I would say no. No, because uh, this year they lost a lot of people. In the athletes. Okay. Okay. Athletes. All right. That's a bet. That's a bet. I don't know nobody. He don't know nobody. That's tough. You guys, so this, this non-power five is looking a little treacherous. Y'all off JMU Tulane. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Shots fired. Bang, bang. Hey, I like Tulane, but I thought no. I almost thought you had a JMU jersey on. Chris, um... <laughs> Point. <laughs> do you feel like do you feel like is there a non power five team to make the playoffs? I mean, this was your question. I mean, besides uh at boys uh at Boise State, absolutely not. So Boise State. Yes. Okay, that's okay. Cool. Well, there we go. Boise right, State. That's the answer. That's the answer. Did, can y'all do y'all agree with that? Disagree with that? Y'all y'all said no. Say but... Boise State's always been a strong program. They only cracked right. that top twenty five. Given that we're now in this expansive twelve team league, that's why I said yes all those times. Because yes, now we have so much more room for teams that might who were toward top might have taken one step back, still make the playoff. But can we uh, all agree success. that maybe the way that it's structured that a non power five school can end up in the college football playoff, even though a team that might be better suited for that? Mm -hmm. That's why I think, you know, if we're gonna do it, I figured I thought it was gonna be like, oh, Whoever's in the top 12, ranking-wise, mm -hmm. ends up in the college football play. But that's not exactly how it's structured. And it's only and it's going to be that way for this season and next season until they go back to the drawing board and think, oh, how are we going to restructure it this time? Well, you gotta have There's always going to be that one team that you're like, well, like a Boise State, State or somebody that's like, is, we all know that they're going to get kicked out in the first round. Like, why are they even in it? Well, I think that that's, that's a problem. Because, I mean, if you're ranked a certain level, there goes into things that make up that ranking. Those rankings are drawn every Tuesday for a reason by a committee of people who have the expertise to run strength of schedule versus area of competition versus strength of your team, right? Or any, and they do take into account, as we saw with Florida State last year, 
significant injuries, yeah. things like that. Yeah, that's but they do argue. mess up like, too, is it, though. Is it fair? They do mess yeah, up they too, do though. Mess Shout up. out TCU. No disrespect. I mean, look, and I get you there, but I think that at the same time, you know, until they come up with a way to full for to give full transparency to that ranking, yeah, you know, it's going to be unfair anyway because we've seen it in the past, as you just said, that the ranking in itself is not necessarily equal. Yeah. Right. So to say, like a an AC an A like a like a non power five school team could make the playoff and it be unfair, I don't think that necessarily counts because remember UCF's team mm. was, that looked like studs and they were undefeated didn't even get any consideration. That's people were laughing them out of the gym, but they went on to go to college football to to a bowl game and dominate the power five football team. That's fair. They play against and and they play against. Uh, Auburn and uh, in the Chick Fil A Peace Bowl, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they just they do- have nine and that was destroyed. before. Yep, they literally dominate. And that was before Auburn. people were sitting out of this game. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I think, think it was a while ago. Oh, I think, okay. I think, I think too though. Was your Chris Griffin with the little hand. Yeah, yeah er, 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 everybody <laughs> take advantage of a little situation. Like remember Notre Dame, right? They didn't used to not play nobody, and and that used to get. Ranked pretty daggone high, but that also used to hurt them too. Come, come selection time too as well sometimes. So, um, how, now y'all mentioned that twelve team format for the playoffs, and y'all been kind of generous, fellas. Colorado get that same generosity. What to make the playoffs? Yes, sir. When this season? <laughs> Look, they know how to fight. They know how to win. <laughs> y'all saw what they did in week one. Like, come on now, like. The way you just... <laughs> they can't get no love from nobody? Unless, unless, unless they... Unless Do you they believe? Win Do you believe? The, unless they can win the damn thing. That's right now. Absolutely not. Are you really pulling the Dion? Do you believe now? Do you like, believe? It's a, I, do you believe they'll make the playoffs? I believe very much that they... I can give them a vote and win... I wouldn't even say five games. Five games? I mean, Here's the reality, too. The season again? Damn. That's Here's the reality, too. Well, Colorado. They can't win. Here's the reality, also. We just saw them play. They barely pulled out a win against an FCS team. And they're not even ranked. All right, but maybe that's five. why, though, they were trying to make a statement. You know how teams play. Like, like Duke can lose in basketball to a random um What's that South Mercer. South Austin Mercer. of whatever school, and you know they get we get their best, their absolute best, and maybe that's what Colorado's trying to build up. Make sure that they understand. Look, you got to bring your A game from start to finish. And what happens if they turn it around? We after that week one, they start dominating. Just saying, like that that maybe that can work. Happen. Or that yeah. can happen, but yeah, I don't have faith as we've seen. I don't have faith in that conclusion. I mean, given the complete lack of, I mean, any sort of dog, as you were saying before, mm-hmm. out of that offensive line, out of that defensive line, I mean, their pass rusher on vital downs, like on, we, on safeties, mm-hmm. just giving away long mm-hmm. plays. And we just saw a game right before we started this. We were watching Oklahoma play Temple. Oklahoma, they're not, they're they're ranked sure, and they're starting a freshman five star recruit at quarterback, and they're dominating them. Like what, thirty-seven to zero going into the third quarter. Meanwhile, Colorado, it's like you got like it's not like this is the first time Shador Sanders is playing is taking a snap in like the power five. It's not this isn't Shiloh Sanders' first time playing. This isn't Travis Hunter's first time going on. So are we are we saying that Shador is not at the same level as that Oklahoma quarterback? No, that's not what I'm saying. The purpose of me saying that was the fact that it's like you can already see like they're playing. They, like Oklahoma was playing Temple, and you can see clearly like they haven't slowed down a little bit. They they got it looks like they got their stuff together now. They still got to go through a SEC schedule type season, but we already can tell that they got it figured out. Colorado is supposed to be a team that is dominant, and we expected them to put like me, me personally. I thought Colorado was going to beat NDSU by like twenty. The final score was like thirty-one to twenty-six. It was up to a hail mary that the guy's caught. It was it was a good catch. The guy did catch the hail mary, but if the clock didn't run out, we could be having a different discussion about Colorado's. I mean, you know, okay. with lack of hope. It'd be a it'd be a it'd be a okay. talk about how they're going to recover from the ashes that was this 
fallacy that, that was promised, right? Because what we saw was somebody who spent an entire offseason talking smack mm-hmm. and didn't address any real issues. You know, they say they bought in this talent. Well, who's your offensive line coach? Who's your offensive coordinator? Right. How are they not emphasizing the run game? I think Pat Shermer's the offensive coordinator. He used to be the Giants head coach, and then he got fired after like a year. Yeah. Yes, I, I remember that. that name. Yeah, that's a, that's a throwback name yeah. right there. And guess what? Hiring people who get fired isn't always a good, isn't a good tactic half the time. Plus, people continue to do it. Maybe the situation they hear about, they know this person. Like, I get it. Maybe, like, context matters, but you're not wrong, too. If people I mean, are right, consistently it, it, getting fired all the time. It's different if it's Cliff Kingsbury, and it's, like, clearly that his offense is going to take another, you know, level if you have him on the team, if you let him just focus on offense. Mm-hmm. It's different when you have a Brian Flores. It's like, okay, he mm-hmm. might be a, an asshole to certain players, but he's a damn good defensive coordinator. He got fired from a job. It's another thing when you have a, a coach who's clearly a loser, mm. and you're like, I'll have him coach my defense. Like, what is okay. that? You know, like, so it, 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 I don't see what you're, where you're going with that, because what I saw yesterday was a Colorado team that was uninspired. They came out onto the field, and aside from their star players who kept them in the game time after time, Jimmy Horn Jr., you know. Dog. Um, dog. Travis Hunter, dog. Shador Sanders, dog, Right. Who else showed up? No one. All those recruits, all those peak transfers, arm tackling. Would you say it's almost out. like they were just excited to like? I'm gonna say is the game one jitters. Like could that, could that, that was could that's some jitters. I thought that was a standard that was set, and that they were allowed to play like that. Mm-hmm. I know damn well there's a lot of coaches that wouldn't have put up with that. Okay. Last yeah. point I said, and last point, and for be, oh, and for move on. And Dion hired the Hall of Fame Warren Sat. To coast the uh, at D line. That's a very very valid point. I forgot Warren, that. they saying that you I'm were sad at a coach. I'm just saying, like hey, Warren's that's tough. a Hall of Fame defensive lineman, but they say coaching a defensive one that played like. Uh, I'm sorry, like if you can't get pressure, like you said, on on a FCS quarterback, but their D line can. Can't come up with a way to hell of exactly. scrambling all over the place. Yet exactly. Again. Exactly. Right. Like, but that's yet again because the offensive line clearly hadn't been addressed. Again, pad level. I watched those cat those kids let things go by and then just stand there and watch. Not going back, not trying to recover. You know, it, it, it comes down to coaching. It could also I, be the fact that Warren I, I would like to be a coach. I would like to point out, fellas, we were extremely generous with Georgia, Alabama, Texas. And Oklahoma, Colorado got no love. That's tough. I just wanted to say that because yeah, buzz it. Love. What you mean? I, I, I said Colorado was the only one. Colorado that didn't get, didn't get love. Yeah. So hey, you love it. Yeah. That, that don't sound like it. Hey, it don't hey, sound like it. Hey, Dion at the end is what it, it is. What it is. It, 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 it is what it is. We're now, we, we are taking a break. Y'all heard the buzzer. It is what it is. Like when we come back, so you gotta keep people on schedule. You know how he's trying to get us off. When, when we come back. We'll we'll talk a little bit more sports, but this has been a couple of segments where we've heard Deion slander. But we'll be back at the moment. Sports is one of the few things that genuinely connects us together. Whether with coworkers, friends, family, we all love the entertainment. Well, here on Get a Bucket, my goal is to talk about sports and its cultural impact. The WNBA, for example, the WNBA is loads of entertainment. From the new rookies battling, displaying their skill sets, and preparing to take the league by storm, to the titans and the MVPs of the league clashing for battles we'll always remember. From imagining the soon-to-be possibilities, to admiring and treasuring the finale. Get a Bucket is a platform where other sports analysts, hoopers, coaches, and fans of the show come and talk about the WNBA, both negative and positive. So if you haven't, take a quick peek. At the very least, you'll have a good time. Remember, sports is one of the few things that genuinely connects us together. So please, tune in and stay connected. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Listen, listen, listen. Championship focus for college. We're going to get straight right into it, right? Y'all, anybody got a contender, like a top favorite contender? Like, y'all going on FanDuel and put y'all, y'all hard-earned money on these boys. Which ones are gonna be? Come on now, I need a team. I need a team. I need a team. Anybody got a team? Texas and Steve Sarkeesian. Texas. I actually second that. Texas. Texas. Ooh, okay. They made it to the top four 
last season. And they're returning most of their starters and have new starters from... The only thing that they lost that may be a little bit of a setback is Bo Davis is now LSU's defensive line coach. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, he wanted to get his LSU plug in. That's all it was. Okay, I see it. I see it. I mean, Chris, I get two taxes. Can I get a can I get a different answer? Or you going you going you going to be with the crowd. I'm picking Georgia. 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 All right. You got Georgia on your mind. Person Beck overrated, but that's not mine. You think that song was overrated? Carson. Wow. Oh, I said, he's talking back. Quarterback of Georgia. I said the quarterback of Georgia Damn. is overrated. Oh, okay. Ain't nothing about no sign. What are you talking about? I said the author of the Georgia's all. I said Carson Beck, the quarterback okay. of Georgia. Okay, is so overrated. Doing, okay, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Damn, Carson. You just use that. He's exactly disrespecting disabled people. <laughs> that's crazy. What the fuck? No. That's crazy. <laughs> Yo, we're going to edit that out, y'all. <laughs> oh, <I'm just> like, <laughs> no more <we're not. laughs> All right, so we got Texas, <laughs> Georgia, oh. and Texas. I'm just keeping a stack because y'all might be wondering. I'm, I'm moderating right now. I ain't got an answer. Um, so why y'all... <laughs> You are upset. Wusa. 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 But they Alright, so get the hell off me. So if 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 if, if Georgia if Georgia and Texas uh-huh. meet up in the in in the championship game. Which one? I'm talking about for the, all the marbles. So the national championship. Because they're going to possibly meet the national championship. championship. Okay, okay, that's fair, that's fair. National and championship. Play, national, and championship. Play, national championship. Yes. National championship. Well, here's the, th- here's the dilemma. If they meet in the SEC championship. Oh, does that knock them out? That, does but, that change the, the sphere of things? It might. I mean, they both should still make the, the tournament, though, wouldn't they? Oh, uh, yeah, I can see that. Possibly. I think it just depends on how far they knock them. If it's like one versus, if it's 1v3. And then they go. You know, well, here's the reality: they both have to play each other in the regular season. So, what happens if, if what happens if if Georgia wins? What happens if Georgia wins that ma- the regular season matchup, and they're and they're, they're the uh, SEC champs, right? And then Texas got to play more games because that first let's let 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 well, let's say Georgia's a box. He has a great point, which is that they're they're actually playing in the regular season. Yeah, right? yeah, in the they, top twelve. They'll meet again in the SEC championship. Potential. Will, I'm gonna say Potential. will they? Because that's why I said like let's say we'll let, let, let's let, yeah let's say Georgia wins it all for the SEC. Mm-hmm. They win the regular season championship. They don't necessarily have to play them, and they're the higher seed. Well, here's what we have to factor in, right? And this is where I'm coming from, right? When they, because we're also fact. Let, let's give people context. I'm looking at it from the standpoint of the only time that one of them will have a loss is when they play each other in that regular season. Yeah. Which means one person will finish the season twelve, and the other one's going to be eleven and one. And that's gonna now be- the question is: Is the team that's eleven and one in the and SEC championship they get the W, and now they're both sitting at twelve and one? Now, how do we factor mm-hmm. that in in terms of like? Because see, okay, I, I, and, and, I, and I get, now. I get that too. I get that too. But when. I would even give the nod to the team that wins the SEC no. championship and loses in the regular season. That's and fair. Exactly. What if, but what if they, what if it's a close regular season? I mean, a uh, championship game, but a dog walk in the regular season. Uh, that would the, still, uh, still that would still like thirty five points. That would still is one. Oh, when it counts, when it counts, when it counts. Okay, that's still, fair. That's fair. I said yeah, that would still end up the same because yeah, if one, I said let's just say if. Georgia wins a regular season matchup. Texas won an SEC championship game. I feel like Texas is going to get the higher nod, and then Georgia will have to somehow, some way, either either get a home game, a home game, or you will get a double bye. Okay, now I feel your argument. Just to add to that, you you mentioned the dog water dog walk thing. If they even if they get dog walk, but they still end up in the SEC championship, that speaks volumes too. Well, I guess yes, but then the team that lost in the championship game that was their only loss, and it was to a it was a close game. So it was a team that you lost to a team that you beat badly, and they had a chip on their shoulder. So like a redemption game, I expect the team that lost to win. So I might I might look at it from that perspective as well. But I do hear y'all as well too when it counted. You know, for the SEC championship. 
they did win, so they are going to get that higher nod. I do hear that. Okay. But like you say, for the playoffs, yeah. though, yeah, to maybe. Fair, though, in college football, from if you look at history, more times than not, unfortunately, the team that beat you the first time mm-hmm. usually ends up beating you the second time. It's not the same as the NFL. Okay, okay. Now, let me ask you this. Who needs that win more? Is it te- okay, because that's what I was, try- that's what I was trying to get to earlier twice, and y'all couldn't answer that damn question. I'm like, yo, it was like, their first time in the SEC as well, so there's a lot of expectations that... Yeah, but they, I, they, they, they did their thing last year, too, now. They weren't in the SEC before that. But they, attacked yeah, but- them, but they played a lot of SEC teams and really against some of the best. Yeah, they did beat Alabama for sure. I, I'll give them that. So, but then again, I guess he don't be view, he don't view Alabama that well. So I guess you know, I, I see why you throw them a little shade. You don't like Alabama. That's cool though. All right, so he, I can respect Nick Saban while not liking Alabama. So you ain't changed my statement, not one. Okay, God, I just want to make sure that's clarified. Just some context. So that's you ain't changed nothing. That was nothing. <laughs> All you said was fine, 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 fine. Say, fine. If I had to take so. oh, fine. If I had to, if I had to take off my LSU cap and put on an Alabama cap, hypothetically, if there's one person that I would get my like props to, it's Jalen Milrow. I love his mentality. I like his style as a leader. I think he is someone that can potentially win the Heisman this upcoming season. All right, that's stop taking those stupid sacks and holding on the ball too long. But yeah, we got a positive show. End of it. I like it that he he started off sluggish and awful, but then you look at how he finished out the rest of the season, and then how he played against Michigan, and that comeback hail Mary, whatever the hell it was against Auburn, and win that game with Isaiah Bond. Like he's he's grown. I like players that you watch them grow and they develop and they become what they were always meant to be. Especially through a little adversity. Like Spencer yeah. Rattler. Like getting, but yeah, getting benched and then coming back and trying to, you know, making something. Like, if you got to lose your job to anybody, I'd rather lose my job to Caleb Williams than some scrub that's not going to be in the league anymore. Oh, but the consensus number overall pick? Exactly. Think about the chip on his shoulder, Spencer Rattler. Let's talk, let's, let's go on a little sidetrack here. But it's pretty awesome that he is on the Saints now. Is what mm. you're saying? Mm. What did you say about Spencer Rattler? What I said was, and we, I don't believe that he, even though he, he was the, he's going to be the biggest steal of the fifth round, but on top of that, I don't believe that there was any reason for him to go all the way down to the fifth. Because before that, real quick, I'm going to let you go. The one quarterback that was taken before him was Bo Nix in the first round, number mm-hmm. 12. Mm-hmm. So between the second, third, fourth, all the way up to when he got picked in the fifth, no quarterback was taken. But the, these NFL scouts had him at like a, Late first, second round NFL draft grade. Really quickly, do you feel like, do y'all feel like, yes or no, do y'all feel like that was the biggest steal of the NFL draft? Of this year? Yeah. That's a good question. That is a good question. I don't I would say it's, I would say it's, I think that's, I think that's really, I think he's the biggest, he's going to be the biggest quarterback. So I think we got a Brock Purdy situation with him on our hands. Brock Purdy? Mm-hmm. Now. All right. Mm-hmm. The biggest deal of the draft is Cooper DeGene. Okay. Under the birds. Okay. The uh, Eagles? Yeah. I think that was Ooh, I don't know about that one. Because I know they wanted Kool-Aid McKinstry, but my team got him too. So. Well, you were high on the Penix move, so I know that was. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a waste of a. <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie. Here's the thing. I, we, we didn't think the, the Falcons were going to go get Matthew Judon from the Patriots. Like. That was a glaring need that they needed to address, and they got him. And now it's like, okay, well, you can you can sit back and allow the Penix pick to be what it is because you've addressed what was a glaring need for you to get. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Fair point. Ladies and gentlemen, clearly we um, went off track. Um, I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> but it's okay because the buzzer did go off. Time out, time out. He had an off-track was- question. He had an off-track question. I was, after that, I said yes or no. Because I was going to say, all right, well, hopefully we can close, but I guess we had a couple more minutes, luckily. So, y'all lucked out. Texas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Apparently, Texas got it. Georgia. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I'm kidding. You, you, might, you, you might have a shot. Um, we'll see what shakes. But, fellas, did y'all have anything that you want to say before we uh, close up shop? College football is going to be amazing this year. Facts. Because I just think. We've reached this crux where the sport is finally something that everybody of all ages is interested in. Okay. And I say that to say that, like, for a long time, it's like a 
family thing. You know, you go, you meet people who are real college people, people and people who weren't. I think it's it's this crux where people are just more invested in general. So okay. that'd be fun. Yeah. All right. And I'll even add to that. I think what makes it even more special and unique going into the season is we now get to we now get to actually see a much wider range of teams compete and fight for that national championship. Because mm-hmm. if we're being honest, you know, I could like for the last, we can count maybe the last five to eight years that the the top four we could always predict. There was always the same four teams. There was the Georgias, the Alabamas, the Clemson temporarily before the NIL came in the mix. And Ohio um, State, Michigan. yeah, Ohio random. State. Thank you. Well, random four sometimes. Random four. You, rotate. you can throw Michigan in there for like the last couple of years, but not not long enough as those four. Not as now we have an opportunity where we can actually see more diversity amongst the teams. Where it's like, okay, now we we're not we're not going to have a Florida State situation last year. They may still have a potential uh, opportunity to get in. Yeah. So I think that you know, blows a lot to be desired, and I think it gives back more um, attention to those bowl games. Because before we were always just focusing on the final four, and mm-hmm. like Nick Saban used to say, it's like we because we're always so focused on the final four. It's like the Sugar Bowl is still important, the Rose Bowl is still important, and we've lost a little bit of that. But now because of this race, the playoffs are structured. All those teams that are fighting against the national championship have to go through those bowls, like the Rose Bowl, the Sugar Bowl, Peach Bowl, mm-hmm. in order to get to the national championship. Okay. So now it's about bringing more attention yeah, yeah. to those again. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. That's the bet. That's the bet. I ain't got shit to say. Cool, cool. Um, like, fellas, I mean, all I want to say, I appreciate I, I, I didn't take your words, did I? <laughs> you sure damn did. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got Someone who ain't got shit to say, you talking a lot. I'm good. Why don't we get you a black and mild? How about that? Hey, it's great. We have, we're I'll promoting black and milds on the show, is what? <laughs> What? Uh, that hey, that's filthy. I know word. it's called get a bucket. We might so, go black and white. we go. <laughs> not at all. But not said, Boy, not at all. I said not at all. Remember when he said that's gonna get edited out? Uh huh. get. <laughs> I mean, yo, but fellas, I greatly appreciate y'all for coming on to the show. Definitely gotta have y'all boys on again. Um, um, can y'all hear me that pillow too? Just get it out of the way. Appreciate you. Just dad it. I got that shit out of me. All right. Now we can really, you know what I'm saying, end the show properly. Um, this is Get a Bucket. I'm your host, Trey. That's Chris. I got him. <laughs> We're going to get a bucket. Hope y'all all have a good one. Wait for it. We don't like them tar girls. Take care. Damn. No, no. Five on top. Five on top. There you go, right there. Oh, I did not know you guys were still here. As, as, as you can see, we're at the back end of the show. No pun intended, but look. Hope you all enjoyed it. And before you go, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow the IG account, share the content to anybody who's anybody. And most importantly, leave your thoughts and comments below. But I got to go back and play Buddy in 2K, so let me unmute here real quick. Excuse me. Hey, boss, I'm back. Nah, you better catch this word. You know we get buckets out here, Cliff.